What's up, everybody? It's your boy, the Italian Stallion, ready for another episode of Rebels with a Cause, because you know the cause don't stop when the clock hits zero. Got another fun show tonight. As always, you know, if you've got something to say, bring it on that comment box. You know, I'm about to be joined with my brother and my co-host, Two Pair Tate. And we got somebody new that's going to be joining the show who has been a huge contributor behind the scenes. And uh, we'll introduce him here shortly and so forth. But first and foremost, you know how I got to start every show. And that is with this announcement that the views and opinions of this program are not affiliated with those of any other organization or of West High School. These are solely the opinions of the uh, people and the contributors that are true rebels with a cause. So just keep that in mind, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Also got to give a shout out to my boy, Alex Thatcher at the Knoxville Coffee Company. They're in the heart of Marble City. Get you some brew that will get you going through the day. Enjoy a nice weekend with it. Got to give him some love. A true rebel with a cause. Him and his dad making that good brew over there on Sutherland Avenue in the heart of Marble City. And also got to give a shout out to my gal, Kim Castle, there at King's Chamber off of Washington Pike. She got me taken care of and uh, always likes uh, to make me look good for the show. So I always got to give her a shout and uh, hopefully soon she'll be up and running. If you thought Tune Up was good, when you go to her chamber, you're treated like a true king. And uh, it makes Tune Up look like a little kid's place. But uh, uh, when she's up and running, uh, getting all that stuff going, uh, I'll give you more information. But right now, she can definitely take care of you with the waxes, the facials, and the haircuts and beard trim. So give her a call. That's the number. That's the address. Go pay her a visit. She'll get you taken care of in no time. But without further ado, let's get this show started on a great note, ladies and gentlemen. As always, I got to bring him on. We shared some great stories last week about prom but i gotta show him off again because he is our guy he is the voice of the rebels for 18 plus years got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight what's on his mind what's in his heart you give him a mic he'll spill it like it's never been spilled before he is the 2003 mr west so wherever you are in marble city or the surrounding areas that filter into west high school or if you're just an alum somewhere else watching and catching the show let's give it up for my man the one the only two pair Tate, Brian Tate. What is up, brother? What's up, man? How you doing? What's up? Oh, buddy, I'm doing good. Just a little bit busy with work this week. Got a, some tornadoes I'm dealing with in the Midwest, but other than that, it has been uh, it's been awesome, honestly. So, but yeah. uh, what's new with you, brother? Well, you know, um, everything's been good uh, this way. Um, been just really keeping an eye on the playoffs. Um, as you know, AAU season has just started up. Um, it's a it's it playoff time is is really big. This is when I this when players really see it. Playoffs either give you exposure or they expose you. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying um, we've seen some teams lose early. We saw a Suns team get swept by an up and coming Anthony Davis, who I've said it, he's my he's my future MVP of this league. And if Anthony Edwards, right? Anthony Ant Man, right? Anthony Edwards, Ant- yeah. crazy. Like the thing is, I've I've watched Anthony Edwards play basketball since he was a senior in high school, and to his. Uh, Long season at Georgia, hmm. and he's one of them ones that we're going to be talking about for a long time. When it when it comes down to it, like this dude is, he is a problem, and the Suns just stink. They they, they stink. They're terrible. Like you can't get one. Get, let me get this right. You get rid of your coach of the year. You get rid of your coach of the year. You then get rid of your point guard. You then tell your center he can walk. No, you trade your center. You trade him. Mm -hmm. Your number one pick. Your number one pick. You trade your number one pick. Yeah. To get swept the following year. Like, I've never seen a team 
falls so completely off after losing in NBA Finals. It is, it is bad. And um, I, I have a, a, a really, really great friend that works for the Phoenix organization in the scouting mm. I haven't been able to talk to him yet about it, but it's just like, how? How does this happen? You know, you give up, you give up a guy like Mikael Bridges, you get a Kevin Durant, you get a Bradley Beal, and you become worse. Mm-hmm. How do you? How does that happen? So, like, that- I, I, I think the saddest part, not to cut you off, is that at times Grayson Allen was their best player. I mean, no disrespect to him, but he was thrown away by the Jazz and everybody else. The Bucks, who's he? You know, he he got blamed for the Bucks' thing last year, if you think about it. And and then he didn't even play those last couple of games because of the ankle or whatever like that. Yeah, uh, he didn't play. So, yeah. It's just like watching the playoffs. You start looking and seeing a lot of things that's different about basketball. And also, I'm keeping up with the transfer portal. Um, this transfer portal. Not gonna lie, it is somewhat ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It when you see some of the guys that are leaving and some of the guys that are coming and going, Jonas Adu going to Arkansas of all places. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm fine with Toby Awaka going to Arizona. You're not in conference. I don't have to see you unless we play him in some Christmas Thanksgiving type tournament deal. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm, I just, that it just makes you say, well, if you didn't show up in an NCAA tournament game, what makes me think you're going to show up for them? You didn't show up for us. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah, it just it's just been a real interesting interesting it's an interesting uh sports period right now. Very right? mm-hmm. I'm still I'm still waiting for the big one, the, the big shoe to fall is like when a North Carolina or a Duke player go to the other side. That's that's the one I'm waiting for. But you know that has not happened yet. But that's the one. So I don't, I don't think it is. Well, and you know what's happening? It's kind of happening in football, I've heard, with Michigan State and Ohio State a little bit, ever since Harbaugh left or what have you. So, you know, like – Michigan mean, guys are going to Ohio State. I don't even know how that how that's possible, but, yeah, I mean – That is weird. I, I mean, not- but I just I – just, I mean, I know that they play pickup in the summer, those two teams and their players. It's more the fans that can't stand each other that are Duke, North Carolina, um, and so forth, but – but seriously, though, like I, I just think that that would be shitting on the holy grail of the school I, you left or whatever like that. I, so, yeah. That's the that's the thing of NIL. I wish I could eliminate. You yeah. cannot transfer to a rival school or a conference. Yeah, conference opponent. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That's- so. Yeah, a conference opponent. Why would you do that? Just- mm-hmm. Well, and, and you know, it's kind of already happening with Miami and Florida State. Like that one guy left Miami to go play defensive tackle at Florida State. He didn't get the waiver, but now he will be eligible to play for Florida State this year and so forth. But I mean, that's like just yeah, that's to think of. Like I wouldn't. I'm, I don't. I don't. I'm from the era where the Miami guy was the Miami guy, yes. or it, in. When we grew up, you were cons- you if you were considered good, like you know how Miami is, you know what I'm saying? Miami to be a there's a difference between is he a good player and is he a Miami guy? Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? You know that from the history of living down there, being yeah. in Coral Gables. Seeing the Sean Taylors, the Willis McGahees, the Clinton Portis, the Jared Paytons, the James yep. John, I can keep going and go mm-hmm. like Edrin James. And the schools they came from, the pipelines, because 
teammates became rivals. You know, there were plenty of guys that were at those same Miami Central teams and so forth that went to Florida State. And that's what made it even like, hey, we were brothers for four years in high school. Now we're rivals and you're in my way for a national championship. And that's what made the rivalry so amazing. It was the in the early 2000s. I'll, I'll even say late 90s. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. And this is coming off some, you know what I'm saying? Miami had some up and down. Florida mm -hmm. State had some up and down. Oh, yeah. It was Miami, Florida State. When you knew it was something on the line, you look across that field, there's Ray Lewis, Warren Sapp. You know what I'm seeing? Those those type of guys. You see an antro role. Then you look across the field, it's a Charlie Ward, a Warwick Dunn, an E.G. Green, a Peter Warwick. Yeah. That's what we grew up on. That oh, was, was our absolutely that was our time. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, and and I can you know, and I'm thinking about, you know, all the great linebackers, you know, that played for both teams on both sides. I mean, they laid the wood when they brought it, you know. I mean, they were trying to football. separate the other side. Football, football will not it, it won't look like what we grew up on because it is a different era to where the amateur now, you might as well call College football semi pro. Mm -hmm. It is it is basically one. It's triple A ball for guys. It is no, it really is. And and you see that's why I brought it up last week. And I want to bring on um, our our special guest that's going to be a part of the show because he does so much behind the scenes. Because I would like his input as well because he has so much knowledge and helps us out on a pinch and he deserves a place as a rebel with a cause and so forth as well. But, you know, the truth of the matter is, is that that's why I brought it up last week that like it's like, tell me when this is over, when they can stop transferring and then give me a roster. Because, you know, like two pair, we're not too, today's the last day of April. So tomorrow's May. And if and we were talking about this a few episodes back, we enjoyed reading that Athlons or Lindy's magazine or Phil Steele and seeing who's going to be the, you know, what the prediction is, what the record's going to be, who's your all Americans, what's the two deep look like. You don't even know who's on your team. I mean, it's cray cray at it's this point. Horrible. It's horrible because it, you we're in a different time. It's like you don't get the you don't get the Street and Smiths Athlon. No, you don't. Them days. I mean, they are, might as well just come out in July at this point, you know, right <laughs> before the season, instead of getting you through the summer those long summer months when you're longing for football. So yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I got I got to bring our guy on and so forth because, yeah. like I said, he's been a contributor, such a supporter. I love this guy. He's another brother. He's another class of 2003 West Rebel and so forth. And uh, um, honestly, um, ladies, if you're looking for Father of the Year, great guy. This is the dude. Honestly, we will be Love Connection af Rebels after dark. Yeah. Honestly, so. But anyway, but without further ado, let's bring him on, Shane O'Mac. Shane McGee, what is up, bud? How you What's doing? Up, How's y'all y'all doing tonight? What's up, doing man? good, doing good. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Yeah, I figured it's time I jumped in on here on the video side. Yeah, absolutely. But absolutely. I'm glad you have, man. Now we're now we might we might we might get Pat McAfee a run for his money now, man. <laughs> I'll have to, I'll have to get you a Rebel with a Cause shirt or something to be a part of this oh, show definitely. officially. It's, it's all West now. I'm done, I'm done with the uh, BHS side. It's all Rebels all day. Well, let me ask you this. Can you can, 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 can you talk about that, Shane? Because you kind of alluded it to a couple episodes ago. And, you know, I tried to hold it back, you know, with the Bearden thing and so forth out of respect for you. And it's all in good fun. You know, listen, Bearden people hate us. We know that. We hate Bearden people. It's, it's just how, how it goes. Uh, or, Hey, more like a. Uh, it's it's it, you know what? I, yeah, hate might be a true strong word. It's just like we different. When you beat them all the time, I mean, they hate. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll I'll put it this way. Um, I sat down. No, I got nothing but love and respect for the beer and program. Uh, the high school coach want to go a different route. Uh, it's all about you no. Know, when it comes to youth, middle school, high school, it's all about who you can get in the program. And 
On my side, I care more about the development of my kids who were going to be feeding into that program compared to let me recruit who I want. Wow. So with that being said, I wish the Beard and Youth Club and high school program nothing but success. My daughter, who's uh, going into her senior year, will be a senior there. I still have love and respect for all my players that I coached through that program. But with that being said, it's back to all West all day, baby. Well, what we need to do is we need to get you uh, coaching for the youth program at West or something, honestly. That's what we need to do. I, 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 I know the uh, commissioner with the youth program. He is the strength and conditioning coach for the Olympic sports at UT. I will say this, that man loves sports. He loves in, he loves making sure kids are prepared for the next level. So as a guy who's been involved in this program in youth sports for the last decade, Greg is the man when it comes to getting kids prepared. So if you got a kid who's in first through fifth grade, look interested in football, hit up Greg over at West U Sports. He'll make sure your kid's ready for the next level. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad to have you back, man, honestly. I mean, and listen, I, 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 I've I got no, nothing against Bearden, uh, the other games they play. It's just that when it gets heated with West and Bearden, you know, I think back to that 50-year anniversary, uh, which would have been my junior year, your sophomore year. You know, they had a they had a great player in Chris Ernst and a good team, and they beat us. And I just think we were better than 30 to 11 to lose to them. But then for their guys to stomp on our emblem in the middle of the well, field. Watching that game last year with the high school kids, first game, of se- first game of the season, super hot out there on Saturday. Oh, God, yeah. That game. Class reunion day. Yeah, we're class reunion day. And in the words, because I know, James, you're all about the uh, wrestling. In the words of a uh, good old JR, that was a slobber knocker. It was a slobber knocker. It was. It, that, it, that deep pass was what 35, 40 yard pass. It, it was uh, it was it ended up being 55 yards from the 45 yard line, from what I understand. Which, what, four, I want to say 14 seconds left in the game. And 14 seconds left in the game, yes. And then my boy Drew Parrott, poor sorry, poor back for Bearden. Love that kid to death, greatest kid I've ever met in my life. He drove us, he drove Bearden down. We got with it. We got within scoring distance. Made a bad read. It just it is what it is. It's football. Yeah, football at its highest level. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean it, it's just it, it's crazy that that happened because you know West had no offense in that oh. game until the second half. But to be fair, they were breaking in a lot of new players that had talent, but had not. You know, to go from when you're walking into a game and you're not. 40 points up and there's a running clock and you can make a mistake here and there. And now you're the guy and it's big yeah. boy football against a yeah. very talented beard and team. You know, I mean, realistically the only team that real, I mean, beard should have beaten Alcoa to be honest with you last oh, year. Yeah. Well, well, we started on the uh, clock or the lights going out with time left on the clock. And that's a, if you look at the team bill West double rules, that is a penalty for the home team. Because the clock is not, or the lights aren't managed. There should not be a timer on those clocks. I ran the lights for Beardy. Yeah. And, and that's an automatic penalty. That yeah. is an automatic first down. I won't believe, I won't say it's like a 35 yard penalty. That puts Beardy in, in scoring distance because I won't say we're on like a 45 yard line as the lights went out. That's an During a pass. Penalty. It was, there was like a long pass. Maybe the guy catches it anyway or something. Yeah. You know? I mean, that group, that bearded group of kids, I coached those kids since they were seven years old. Wow. And that's part of the best group that came through Bearded ever. And I made, I made a bet years ago that's like that group, that group of beard players will make it a deep state run. And they did make a deep state run. Mm-hmm. But, oh, my son's up here tapping. He wants to say hi real quick. Hi. Hey, what's <laughs> up, little man? Hello. <laughs> but uh, that's all that penalty. And the fact that, that the refs didn't call the penalty on that play. Is ridiculous because as the home team, no matter what happens, you are responsible for those lights. And if the lights go black, because I was operating lights for Bearded, and 
if I, so we all know that we all got the strobe lights in Knox County now. Mm -hmm. So there's a mandatory box up there in the press box, which uh, James, you obviously know, if, if you hit those strobe lights, it blacks out the field. And that's a, that's a no-go per Knox County and TWSWA. So lights go on black, no matter what the county and TWSWA, that's on that building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and he knows what he's talking about because West actually got a uh, uh, an unsportsmanlike 15-yard penalty because the lights that – we had the um, – the pregame lights on and not the yeah, game the, game uh, lights on. The robots, those ours were uh, white and, and red, but it's supposed to be maroon. Um, yeah. This is the uh, red and blue because I know the color combinations and what button push, I think it's number three is the button push on the block that's mm -hmm. up there in the box. But, yeah, like you you can't do it. Your athletic director will chew your ass for it every single time. Oh, and we did get a talking to up in the press box. We really did. I mean, you, I you know. I gave a woman a seizure two seasons ago. From uh, Jeff, from Jeff Hill. she she her her uh, daughter came up there and yelled at me during that, and I was like, "Hey, it says in the front of the gates that there are strobe lights here, though, so you can't do, you can't say anything." Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. Um, you, you know, speaking of the spring football and two pair, I know you got an announcement about basketball that I want to give you the floor on too here in a minute. But you know, the uh, West, the West uh, uh, app. I don't know if you've heard about it and so forth like that. Um, it's really a cool feature, and I don't know who came up with it, but what a what a great idea! It literally is West Rebels, and I don't even know if you can see it, but literally. Like you just download it and it has all like news, rosters, schedule, games, and so forth for any sport, any sport on there. You can download it on the Play Store. You can download it on the um, Apple Store and it's free. And uh, it's, a, it's a really cool way to keep up with stuff uh, with West and the rosters and they've got the pictures of the players. Um, but uh, West is uh, media has really been hyping next Friday night up in Coryton, six o'clock. Now it's at six um, so, in Corrington for the scrimmage for West against Gibbs and so yeah. forth. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued because there's a couple of guys um, that I don't know if they're still on West or not. Um, their social media says they are, but I didn't see them really on the roster, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to be pleasantly surprised when I get there next Friday. But if they are still on the team and the positions that they play, um, West has a chance to have a really good season this year. I'm not saying go undefeated, but they really do want to make that history of going for a third straight 5A title because it's never been done before. It really, it's incredible that the other classifications have had, you know, winners of multiple years, like the Alcoas, the Marables, the Oaklands, but it was not done in 5A. That's the thing. Fulton had their run in 4A, but yeah, it's not been done in 5A, which is incredible. So, what yeah. what I find surprising is, you know, we have a lot of talent here in East Tennessee. You've got your Marables, you've got your Alcoas. We're becoming a we're going to become a powerhouse. Yeah. Why are we not getting more D one kids? You know, I I I'm I'm very surprised about it. To be honest with you, Shane, I can't I look at your your Middle Tennessee, your West Tennessee. We go up against we go up against Southern State every year. And we keep he still think he's bringing up trophies. Why are we not getting looks? Like I get that you know, you know, a, a five star in Tennessee is a three star in Georgia, maybe a two star in Florida, but our middle and West Tennessee kids are getting D one offers left and right. Why are we seeing this? That's just what I, I want our other. That's a great question. What do you got? Why we're not seeing it? To be honest with you. I really don't know why we're not seeing it. It's it's crazy to even to even think about that we're not seeing that that type of talent being at the D one level. You're seeing them go to a lot of smaller schools. You're seeing them to a lot of FCS schools. I mean, let's look at it. we got we got West, we got Alcoa, we got Fulton back in the day, we got Maryville regular, we got Alcoa, we got Greenback. I mean, those kid, those teams are punching out state titles. Like for Anderson County. Yeah. And I know how Anderson County, like, I mean, you've got – outside Anderson County, you got you got Clinton City, you got Oak Ridge, and then the rest of that county is all Anderson County. Those kids have to bust in regularly. Mm -hmm. 
Why are our local kids not getting those C one offers? I can't. I, I mean, I mean NIL transfer portal that makes sense. I got I got kids I coach who are going to go to small schools or walking on at major schools. I got a player right now. I talked to his dad recently at a UT game. He's a he's a preferred walk on at UT. Plays a beard and kids a stud. Uh, Sam Thomas. Uh, walk on at UT. You look at inner school. If he been if he played in Middle or West Tennessee or anywhere else, they could be a D one offer and have a scholarship. A lot could be said about Ryan Scott too. Ryan Scott's a preferred walk on over there, and and I, in my opinion, I I know he's a very humble kid and and so forth, but I would put him up as one of the best linebackers that's ever adorned the West uniform. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean Sam was flat out. D1 receiver, D1 DB, kid that freaking mossed the kid in the back of the end zone last season. I mean, that kid is a stud. Strongest mm-hmm. ever coach in my life. Like, I, I used to go up against him one on one. I mean, BT giving about my, my speed and strength, all that, all that good stuff. But, like, East Tennessee doesn't get recognized. Mm-hmm. We, don't, we don't get the respect across the state, even though we're pulling in the titles. I would even say the same for basketball, too. I oh, mean, yeah. anybody watch Javin Carter for Alcoa? Holy crap, I'd put him against anybody in this state. Oh, Hank Gary, Pondicherry, yep. Devin Martin against any kid. And not, I mean, you got – and, and shooters-wise, I feel like – Oh, let's go with the Kimber Twins. The Kimbers, yeah. I've been watching those kids since middle school. Yeah. Dude, Elementary man, school. Man, so, yeah. And I mean, complete. I mean, those guys kind of brought it. But the thing is, that group had been together like the Dexter Lewis's on those teams. And the thing is, those groups stayed together because look at the assistant coaches. Like oh. Darrell Hayward gets the 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 Knox preparatory school job. And he yeah. was the coach under Jody Wright and being an assistant coach, the guy's won a middle school championship at Vine. Yeah, he's won two state titles as an assistant coach. And get this, he gets that job. Then you get the Pellissippi State job that goes to a former Alcoa legend. You know what I'm saying, Dorian, who. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just really great what's going on, man. I mean, I Darren, never thought I'd see the day. I'm happy for him. I never thought I'd see the day, guys. To be honest, oh with my you. god, I, I never story. thought I would see the day. Never yeah. thought today. No, no, I didn't. Well, you know, Shane, I'll bring you something okay. up. Too. Darian James, Darian James. Sorry, Darian. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, great. He doing. When I say, I, I know what he <clears> do like. He's going to get this high school talent that doesn't go to the Walter States. Mm-hmm. They don't they don't go to uh Milligan, the the ones that don't go to Tusculum, the ones that don't go to Carson Newman. Pellissippi State is going to be a power. Well, it's, like I, it's like I said last week in the, in the comments. All these kids right here are having to, you know, you know you're getting your your lower your Juco, your B2 all, all that stuff, uh, NAIA or whatever it is, I can't remember. Get on film. Like, this whole, between COVID and the transfer portal and NIL, like, for you to make a name for yourself, you got to go to the JUCO route. Oh, my God, what's the that Right there, perfect example. Mm-hmm. So, small D, small division school, hit UT, he's going to be top draft pick here in a few weeks. But, yeah. I mean, it's not the same anymore. No. no, it ain't. No. It ain't and you've got to re-recruit your kids every year, it seems, well, even after spring practice. So, I mean, I mean, back in our day, it was, you know, you put your film in as a JV and varsity player in high school, you were going to make it to the next level. Now it was like, okay, well, I got a little bit of film. I got all my film, but I'm not going to make it past the uh, basic levels to get, you know, bare minimum offers, and I got to show out again the next level. I think if I can talk about West for a second, I know for a fact that coaching staff does everything they can to push some of those kids. Like if anybody sat and watched Braden Latham and no disrespect, you know, he's over at Eastern Kentucky University and so forth like that. I really believe that kid 
could have done just as good a job as uh, Deshaun Bishop going to UT. I, I think, I mean, like, look, like, look, Deshaun Bishop, special guy at Carnes, no doubt. But let me just tell you this, yeah. Braden Latham, had he played the whole game? But we didn't have to play him the whole game because we were killing teams. He would have had 3,000 yards. I mean, um, I'm, I'm not trying to, um, you know, dog Deshaun. I'm just saying that we had – uh, uh, Was it Coastal Carolina was his offer. Coach leaves. He knows he's on he's, – he, he wants to make a change, so he's going to be a walk on UT. But at what point does he transfer out of UT because he puts stuff in practice film? Because obviously the film is going to be there. Mm-hmm. The staff are going to be there. I mean, if yeah. they, they shows out in a game. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the only thing show out in a game at this point is if you know we're playing small schools for you know, hey, here we're giving you giving you a million dollars to show up with us and whoop your butt. But yeah, it's all about. <laughs> It's all about film. It's all about film at this point. Well, and you want to know something? Anderson Smith, here's a perfect example. You know, when I talked to him um, right before Thanksgiving uh, or on Thanksgiving Day when I went to the practice in the morning, and that's really a special thing when you're still playing ball Thanksgiving weekend in, in, in high school. Um, you know, he told me that he had only had one offer up to that point. And here he's playing with a brace all year. He's been a solid kid at West, played for a couple of years at varsity level. And, and literally the guy is only been offered by Valparaiso. And everybody that knows Valparaiso, that's a basketball school. You know, yeah. that is a basketball school. So I basically, um, to the point, realistically um, was like, somebody's got to offer this kid something. And it warmed my heart that he at least got to go to Walford because Walford does play Clemson and, you know, some of these teams. And maybe he shows out, has a special season, and can maybe, you know, go somewhere else. And we got to remember, Walford does recruit Knoxville. Brandon yep. Berry, who was a stud in football. When you want to talk about a wide receiver and a dog, like an exceptional uh, talent, man. Like they they recruit they recruit Tennessee well. So so here's my question on this one: UT recruits Knoxville, right? Especially in basketball. Mm-hmm. How many guys have come out of Knoxville that went to UT that are transferred who stayed a full three years? At least three. Uh, Brandon Lopez would have been one. Brandon Lopez played. He 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 was, you know, reserve guard for UT. Yeah. Um oh god. Name is name's John Blank. But what uh, helped Brandon, what helped Brandon was going to that prep school. Then coming back to Austin East. Yeah. Because uh, when B. Lopez goes to that prep school, then comes back to Austin East, he re- he re- refined his game. Yeah. Uh, oh, I can't think. Uh, local school retired his number. Uh, was it one of the Jordans? Went to uh, Carter? Jordan Bowden? Yep. Jordan Bowden. Yeah, that would be that'd be the last player I can think of that stayed at UT longer. Uh, Skyler. Who was the kid that went to UNC Asheville? Didn't he go to um, uh, UT? Uh, Drew Bimber. Yeah, yeah. Bimber, he he dominated at Greensville. Yeah. How how good? How how good is Drew? Like, how good did he become when he went to UNC Asheville? Though, like, oh god, the tournament. He was the talk of the tournament as a a team. If yeah. this guy stays, they're a Final Four team. Yeah. Do you, do you put him above a uh, Folky with the love for Tennessee? Above Fulkerson? Yeah. Who? If, uh, if, talking if, about, uh, if, if Pember if Pember stayed at UT, you put him above Folky with how he how he was able to dominate. If he, oh, got I would. I would. Conference player. Yeah, and he could shoot the three. Like he, he was like almost automatic. So yeah. My thing, if if you conference player of the year in any other conference but your own, you definitely could be something in the SEC. Oh, yeah. yeah, he would have been. Man, Drew Pember was nice in high school. He was oh, nice. I remember watching him in high school. Like, it was just hey, he was cold. He was cold at Bearden. Who was the big guy at Bearden? That played with their state championship that shut down the big kid that was going to Memphis. That was like, oh. who was that? 
Oh God, I can't remember his name. That kid was a beast, though. That kid. He was. I mean, he held his own with somebody that was top ten, five star, and helped win oh, yeah. the state championship. It was Bearden's first state title in basketball. That kid was that. Well, that, that, that was Pimper's year too. So was that was that the Quez team? We yeah, that was Quez. That was Quez's team. Yes. Hey, talk about hey Quez glow. Oh come on, come on. Quez with the Florida, and then ended up going down to D two. He went to. He, he, was he at? Is he at Kansas? He was at Kansas State this year. Uh, I thought he went lower than that. They drank him again. I, I feel like. Is this, Quest, was, Quest was a beast. Is is this his? Is this his last year of college basketball? I got. I think if you have COVID year, this is the last year of the COVID stuff or whatever. That was the twenty nineteen team, so he would be a super senior. To, he would be a super senior. Yeah, then he would be. Yeah, no, then he gets the benefit of the doubt of the COVID year. So, yeah, this would be the last year of that. Because that was, that was the last year that, like, you truly got to travel for everything. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and Quez and Drew at the, on the court and say, Tom, come yeah. on. I, that's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you're talking about basketball, and, and here's the other thing, too. If you think about it, basketball and football need to be where baseball's at because Farragut's putting guys in major league and uh, and and big time D one programs or whatever. Yeah, baseball, yeah. You know, in baseball. So, but you know, and I know baseball's a little bit different, but realistically, you can't tell me that these guys can't go to the next level and show out, um, especially when they're when they are the ones bringing the gold balls back in both sports, whatever these schools, you know, whoever, whichever. Okay, school. I got. I, I know a dude that I was like. Elementary school with the middle. I was sure with middle school with us. Uh, Michael McHenry. Um, went in up to Farragut, play catcher at Farragut. Went on to play for the uh, Pirates. I remember that name, Michael McHenry. I remember when he played for Farragut. Yeah, he, he would have been uh, mine. Uh, BT's. He was a year younger than me. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, uh, anybody, I mean, the, the West kids are, are not only smart, they're good. They've got the grades to get into places, um, you know, and maybe they might be just a little undersized. But damn, I mean, look at their film. They can play. I mean, they make plays and so forth. I, I, remember, I remember a comment that uh, Coach Cummings said. He, t- he said to the school paper was our, I mean, the staff has changed now with the way it's been at the school. But it's our our administration needs to understand that there's more to school than just academics. And this was back there in the principal that we had there that that you know want us to be bearded and all that good stuff. But we had stud athletes across the board, but we didn't get the recognition. We didn't get the support that we needed. And now you look at the way the school is now. I mean, God, I would love to be an athlete at West right now. Oh yeah, with the facilities, the support that we have, God, you think how many of us would actually make the college? Like, I mean, I had, I was looked at for track, and BT can vouch for my speed. Like seventh grade, they were looking at me for track, and like we didn't have that support back then. No. But now, now the school is set up for success. I mean. Yeah. Just- I mean, when you go to a game now, it is so special to walk in there and see those facilities, you know, I mean, and and the stadium is like true Friday night lights, you know, and yeah. I wish the stands were a little bit bigger and so forth. Maybe it's not in that fashion, but that Jumbotron, holy crap, and that yeah. artificial turf. So, I mean, we, we, we can think pilot for the artificial turf because they had to come up with some funds that they are uh, they get truckers. But- <laughs> But Thanks, those, those, those jumbo chunks about three hundred thousand dollars a piece because I know the fundraising aspect of that fund. But I mean, given that I came from another program after you no know, high school, West has, and as a kid, as a father of a kid who's, I've got my son is a smart athlete. I read him be at West, plain yep. and simple, because yep. everything is there for an athlete to succeed. Everything, everything. And and that's why we should be competitive in all the sports or what have oh. you. I'm not saying win the whole thing because that's that would be impossible. But, but, be yeah. competitive, like something fun, you know, and to watch and so forth. And, and, and realistically, uh, that's what I'm excited about. Um, you know, here's the thing. When West won a couple of years ago and went undefeated with the Braden team, 
I mean, they were just badasses. I mean, you know, they the only really game they got challenged um, was the Alcoa as well as the uh, Powell game and so forth, which has been well documented. But everything else, they, they were in control. Um, but then to watch last year's team, a lot of everybody was like, well, you know, they lost all these guys and so forth. And, you know, they just got better week by week and they were fun to watch to grow. And then they really got it clicking in November. But I'm intrigued with this team. Like, you know, Shane, you, you're familiar with some of these guys being on the opposite side. They were city champions. They've been champs uh, in the undergrad or what have you. But now they're the guys. So yeah. what, 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 how do you transition to that, that you're the guy now and so forth? It, it's a hard transfer from, like, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and say, you know, that, that Mac League, that middle school era group. Like, my first group that I coached, they won that first Mac League, which is that middle school league. And those kids all graduated this year. It, it's a hard transfer. Like, he went from being the man across the new sports to, man, I'm, I'm competing against the best of the best. Because the way the the way the way middle school league is set up, it's, it's a lot better now. I'll give it that. They've got all 14 high school programs tied in to everything now. So you get all the sport, you get all the, bat, all, excuse me, all the football teams across. So the competition is a lot stronger now. So you're seeing your West, your Farragut, your Beardy. Those are the three, I'll say, and Austin East. Austin East has been dominating across, mm -hmm. especially the youth level. But those kids don't grow up together. Mm -mm. And it's a, oh, hey, you should play over here. You should play over here. But once it's to middle school, like, you got to play for your high school zone. Like, my boy over here, unless I get a West address, he's going to play for Carnes. And I'm, yeah. <laughs> this boy knows football right here. <laughs> I, I, I had to, like, literally show the whole team, like, all the plays. Yeah. Thank, I, I had to run him up. <laughs> thank you, Keegan. But, uh, man, it, it's, a it's a tough climb. And I, I told every single person, there's a, there's a Facebook group. I was like, hey, Beard will make us a, a deep stake run when they get to a certain level, when they get to their junior, senior year, because it's the competitiveness is there. But you've got to get these kids playing with each other early to see development. And we don't have that from South County right now. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, you know, here's the other thing, too. Look at those programs right now. You know, Farragut, I don't think it's going to be that much of a transition from Eddie to Jeff, you know, from father to son and so forth. And now oh. – it's the same. It's the same. It's the same aspect. The same, yeah. And 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 I'll tell you this: if if they if they really, um, you know, he he was interviewed and they were talking about they're breaking in a new quarterback and they've got three guys to choose from and uh, one of them is that basketball player two pair that's uh, a rising junior that's part of that sophomore class or what have you. I can't think of his name, but we've said it before. Um, oh, I know we're talking about. I've been, I've it's been on the top of my mind. Um, I could look it up if you guys or something, right? Who'd you say? He's the uh he he was he was a Farragut basketball player that that had a really good game against us in that upset, but he's he's up for quarterback and so forth. He's a he's right. Like, he's like the if I if I if I'm right, he's like he played, Farragut. PG. Yeah, he played for Farragut. He's part of that sophomore group. Dom, Dominique Van Acker? Nope, not him. Is it Parker or something? Let me see here. I'm going to look it up. You talk for a second. I'm going to look it up because uh, – but I recognize the name because he was a good basketball player for him. And he's just an athlete, and he's probably the most mobile of the three quarterbacks that are up for the job and so forth. So hold on one second. Man, I like that Fergie group, man. I mean well, – let's, let's talk about the uh, fight that happened between them and William Blunt a few, two seasons ago. What? There was a fight? Oh yeah! Uh, oh god! Like it, it turned into a three on two. Only players that weren't suspended due to the brawl. Mm. Noah Hag. Noah Hag. Noah. Uh, Noah Hag. Yeah, yeah. He. Yeah. So there's three guys competing for their spot. Kent Carbaugh, who's uh, the rising senior, six two, one eighty. 
the junior Noah Hag, who's 5'11", 175, and then they've got a sophomore who was the freshman quarterback last year, Corbin Hobson, who's 6'1", 195, who they believe has the strongest arm of the three guys or what have you. But, you know, they, they just don't have the big game experience, and they're replacing Cam Duncan, who was the guy last year for Ferris. Cam Duncan, I remember Cam Duncan. Yeah, no, he's a tall kid and so forth, yeah. but... But yeah, but but Farragut, I mean, like they've got uh, they've got a lot of um, talent, but it's just unproven because realistically, according to Jeff Courtney, they uh, only return three starters on offense and six on defense. So you know, I mean, they're they're not a bad they 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 should have been in the playoffs if they hadn't messed around with Cleveland as the fourth seed. I mean, they beat Maribel. You know, they gave Bearden a good game and so forth. So they gave West everything they wanted. They they just wouldn't quit. They beat Powell. So they weren't a bad team. They just had some bad luck and had some bad injuries, too, that hurt, hurt their season. So, yeah, I mean. The schedules of those three teams, by the way, is absolutely insane. Bearden, Farragut, and West. They, I mean, West's first three games are – Powell, Anderson County, and then West at home. And they're on the road for the Powell and Anderson County games, just to let you know. So that's fair against the first three games. We're talking, we're talking football side? Football. Yeah. Football still, yeah, football. Oh, I mean, you still got, you got a team that's removed, what, two seasons, Anderson County, what, two seasons removed away from the state title? Yeah. Uh, Beard yeah. makes deep, big Beard makes a deep run. Obviously, West, like, we, we dominate. So that's what it is. But, yeah, I mean – Larry Frank, uh, my big supporter, uh, one of the things that should be done to make any school a consistent threat to deep playoff runs in all sports is community support of youth sports, basically becoming a feeder program. Amen. Amen. So yeah. we, we don't we don't get that in Knox County. It's uh, mm -hmm. I can speak from the uh, youth athletic side is it's who you get. A lot of these coaches are all about their ego. And I will say that because I've been doing this for 10 years. It's their ego. They coach for their ego. You get kids who should be at, at who should be at AE, kids who should be at Powell, you get kids at Beard, Bearded, at West, at Farragut. I mean, there's a kid that lives one street over for me, plays for Powell, he's on over here at Carnes. So he should be at Carnes. I mean, pretty much. Yeah, he's at Car yeah. like, and I talked last week, like Carnes is, you've got the community support, but they'll get the coaches on top. And I knew Coach Taylor very well. He coached uh, – he, he was at Bearden when uh, my oldest one was growing through the program, early – or late elementary, early middle, took the job at Carnes. It's – I'm a firm believer in all kids should play where they're zoned for for high school because kids will then – like you learn how – you learn the characteristics and the mannerisms of your teammates. Where it's basketball, football, whatever. I mean, props to West Bearded in basketball for what they do for us, but it should be we should have leagues across the board where kids are growing up together. You get that community build, you get those kids playing together across the board where there's future success all the way across. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree. No, I agree. I agree. No lies told. You know, switching gears a little from the high school to the NBA, um, my God, like, I, look, and it's no – look, I'm a Miami guy. I'm a Heat guy, and it's probably done tomorrow. Too many injuries to overcome. I'm not making excuses. But, my God, man, like, there's talk now of Kevin Durant wanting out of Phoenix and going to Miami. Please don't. Please, No. No, I don't want Kevin Durant in the Heat uniform. I don't know how no. you feel too, Perry. No, what's up with LeBron's comments the other night about it's just basketball? Would you ever heard Kobe? No. Or MJ say that? Never. If Kevin Durant goes to Miami, I will say this. Going to Miami for someone who just wants to hoop, it is really not – the thing is, Kevin, you went to someone else's team, right? You go to someone else's team, and you're wanting to not be the guy so that when you lose, 
it doesn't come bad on you because this scene is Devin Booker's team. Mm -hmm. So it's this complex of, damn, whenever you're going to say, you know, you're the guy in this, because when you won, it was Steph's team. Right, it, it, it's, it's his team, but you're 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 the Finals MVP two times. Mm -hmm. And my thing with Kevin Durant is when the chips fall down and they lose, it's easier to pick. Well, you know, Steph Curry is his team. Oh well, Devin Booker, you know, is his team. Uh, Kyrie is his team, it, and, and it's like this ongoing cycle of that. And that, that's what it feels like when you're watching it. Um, it's just with with KD, I feel I feel like he 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 just want to hoop, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, being able to discuss this with people that know Kevin Durant, like Kevin Durant, just he really want to hoop. He want to hoop. That's it. He just a hooper. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and you think about this. The knock on Kevin started, I guess, at Texas, right? You know, he was a one and done first surefire, and right. they didn't do nothing that team. Um, you know, he gets to the league, grows they, with the thunder. Second, they lost second round. Yeah. And, well, and then and then of course, what wasn't he second? Wasn't he second pick after Greg Oden? Yeah. But Greg Oden's knees and feet second, failed second. him, and so forth. And yeah, so Durant gets picked, and and then they become the Thunder from the Seattle SuperSonics, and uh, and then and then basically, if you think about it, it was him, <sighs> Wilfred Westbrook, and James Harden with the Thunder that lost to the Heat, mm -hmm. and then afterwards, um, you know, it, 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 after the Thunder, did he go to Brooklyn or did he go to uh, Golden State? Golden State. He went yeah. to Golden State. Then he goes to Brooklyn. And so basically without the Golden State years, he really has not won in the other super teams he's been a part of pretty much. Yeah, yeah man. It's just like that's just always seen with Kevin Durant. Like when is it going to be – you know what I'm saying? You you put the onus on you because he, he does this thing where he just wants to be the Robin, but then he didn't get seen as the guy, but if they lose, well, not nah, it's this the guy. You know what I mean? It, that's yeah. the complex I get with Kevin Durant. Like, that, that's the thing that has always miffed me because in Oklahoma City, you would you would you know what I'm saying, defer to Westbrook as the C is, oh, it's Westbrook's team. But when y'all lose, it's like you want Westbrook to take the – he gets the brunt of it if y'all lose. It ain't ever seen on Kevin Durant. Mm. And it, it's just like, damn, I, I just noticed it so much because it's an ongoing thing uh, wherever KD's at. So it's like, dang, man, you really just don't want to, you don't want to take, you don't want to take any accountability for that when y'all lose. Like, it's not on you. <laughs> um, that's my, I, that's what I, it. I, I've got some breaking news, by the way. Do you hear? Do you hear the 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 tears outside by any chance? I think that's Stephen A. Smith. His Knicks blew the game and lost in overtime to the 76ers at MSG, so now they go back to Philadelphia for game six. I The tears taste delicious. All that trash that was talked about this morning on first day. Keep going. Yeah, it, it, it's wild because what all the trash that Joel and B said about Philly fans. Ooh. And now you got to go back. And if you lose in Philly, mm -hmm. they are going to riot. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Because this time, when is this his time? You know, the knock on him, he can't stay healthy. That's been the knock if, his whole career. If they lose, if they lose in Philly in game six again, oh, man. Yeah, he was drafted to the Sonics. But, I yeah. mean. I yeah. love this. End of an era. Warriors, CP3, Durant, LeBron, all home for the second round. <laughs> so, wow. How crazy is that? that yeah. 
How crazy is that the Lakers are <laughs> six inches? Yeah, that's even a arrogant. How how crazy is it the Lakers talked all this mess about the Denver Nuggets to then get a gentleman sweep? Mm-hmm. Five games. Yeah. I don't and, and, I'm- and to be fair. Eight to one in the last nine. If you go back last year in the finals, in the conference finals, horrible, just awful. You know what? Like for all the greatness this dude, this dude accomplished, he gets a lot of hate. But it's like he's in year twenty one. Mm-hmm. Like we gotta be, we gotta come to reality. Like yeah, he's a great player. Mm-hmm. From one of the greatest to ever do it, one of the yeah. greatest, like ever. Like when you're one of the greatest at doing something, as like the guy, like you know how hard it is to stay at the top the, of any profession to stay at the top, and the fact that LeBron has done it for up to 21 years, mm-hmm. and you lose the first round. When does it just become a? It could be they don't know how to put together a good team. It's just, no. it's just no. not. They've not put together a championship team since the bubble. And here's what I say about LeBron: He don't have that dog in him that Kobe, that Jordan had. He don't have it in him. He don't. And and you know, you look at him. He should have that dog in him and so forth, where it's like, okay, you're a role player. I don't need this guy to join my team. I am going to be the guy, and so forth. You just need to make three-pointers, and that's it. You know what I mean? That type of a thing. I think he does. I, I think he does, but this whole LeBron don't put fear anybody, like, that, man, I'm like, <sighs> they, they say, like, people feared Kobe, people feared MJ, when they talk about LeBron, it's like they don't fear him. It's uh, he, he's he's too not. I don't know, man. LeBron, I, from what I've seen, I can't I can't not say that he's not a killer though, James. I I can't. The man, if he ain't a killer, I don't know too many guys that can get forty k. 11K mm-hmm. and 11K, like, that's some killer. It, for me, yeah. I, I feel like he's... Oh, he's a stat uh, sheet stuffer. He's a stat sheet stuffer. But at the end of the game, when you pass it to Wade and that Mavericks series, and, and I'll never forgive them for losing to that Mavericks team. I can't stand Mark Cuban, but that's just me. Forget my Miami Heat bias. I just can't forgive them for losing to that Mavericks team back oh, in the man, we Keep were, going. We Shane, were, you have the floor. Yeah. We were done, man. We were done. Yeah. <laughs> we were. Uh, we, we all know LeBron's a stat sucker. But I mean, I would never doubt his greatness as a player. Yeah. The edge, though. I mean, the comments he makes to the media is just like, uh, uh, I just care about I will, this will be the greatest. But does he, does he make everybody around him better? Does he challenge everybody or does he care about himself more? I don't know, though. He's got a lot of guy championships, though. That's, mm-hmm. He does. Like, the man's won four. Yeah, he has. He has. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean yeah, that's greatness is a, itself. I mean, you look at, you look at the greatest event. Hell, you look, winning. You look, at, you look at Bill Russell, you look at Kobe, you look at Jordan, you look at, I mean, yeah, you could say Ori, because he's got more championships than anybody else besides. Steve Kerr. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But Robert Ori's got what seven championships? Yeah, I think he's got nine. I think he's got nine, if I'm not mistaken, because he got two with the Rockets. He got three with the Lakers. That's five. Uh, two with the Spurs. Two with the Rockets. Three with the Spurs. No, with the Lakers. He, with the Lakers. That's he, five. Yeah, he won that three. He won that three with the with the Lakers. He got what two with the Spurs? Did he win? Hold on. <laughs> He has. He's got. He's got like seven. I'm pretty okay. sure he's got seven. Two with two, two with the Rockets. Yep. Three with the Lakers. The Lakers. 
That's five. Yeah. And I'm going to take that to the first. Seven championships. Seven. Seven. Just at, right at the right time. Better than the Just at the right place at the right time. So. so check this out. Jordan was a general. Kobe was an assassin. LeBron is Colonel Sanders with a tan and a bald spot. Dang, man. Larry Frank bringing the heat, man. Larry Frank bringing the heat. So, hey, hey, goat, hey, ball equals goat sets. There you go. Yeah. There you go. No, yeah. no, if, uh, we, we got some trivia tonight. It, tell me the teams and how many championships did Robert Orion win? Yeah, that, there you go. There you go. Larry, whoever's watching, who how, who were the teams, what year, and uh, how many did Robert Ory win as the NBA champion? We, he said he. We just want to see if anybody was following along. Right, yeah, since I'm, since I'm the statistician over here. You are. You are. Look it up. So, yeah. Oh, by the way, speaking of teams that just completely have no showed, um, are the the Bucks? They're done, right? The Pacers are about to upset them. Not looking good. I'll try seven. It's not looking good. Ready? Yeah. 94, 95, Houston. 0102 or 2000, 0102 Lakers. Yeah. 05, 07 Spurs. Here we go. Wow. That's my case. There we go. Wow. And Jordan's my dude. So that puts what? You got you got Bill Russell with what? God, I can't remember. Nine. Nine. I agree, Bill Russell. Oh, Robert Ory is in second with seven. Is it me or is Milwaukee going to lay down? They're just, they look no, like. They better not. I mean, they. they, they you know, with all the crap that was talked, they got the coach fired. Didn't even make it half the season. They hired Doc Rivers. Oh, my <laughs> like he Are was going to solve me? anything. Oh, you know, Pacers put them out of their misery. Honestly, put them out of their misery. <coughs> Is it Miller time? <laughs> right, it's thirty-one twenty-three at the end of the first quarter. I will say this. Like, um, New Orleans, they stink. Like, they you, stink. You didn't even, you didn't even get a single, a, like a single game against those guys. You see these guys in your conference. You can't get one, one. What I don't even Zion? hear that Zion was out. I don't even want to hear that. Like, like they couldn't get one with McCullum and Ingram and the other guys that showed up for them all year. Jones, you, this is what I don't get. You showed up to beat the Kings. The yeah. Kings are better. They were. The, the Kings, they just had a bad game. They had a bad game. If the Kings, if the Kings win that game, the Kings take two games. I think they take them to seven. Really? Wow. Wow. Yeah. I really, I really do. I really, this is why. The Keegan Murray, Sabonis, Fox. I, I like that. I like that setup. I like that set. I like that setup, and I think it could have gave Oklahoma City some problems one or two games. But I think if they if they get game five, then it will go seven. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I can see that. Beat them. Yeah. Who, who, who has been, is Shane, two bear, anybody get, who was the most disappointing team in this first round so far? Who in was the first round so in far? This first round so far. The most disappointing? Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of knew New Orleans was going to get swept. Uh, mm -hmm. Phoenix. Phoenix. Had more yes. so than the Lakers, more so than the Lakers, pretty much at this point. Well, the Lakers are proved who they are. The Lakers are disappointing because of all the smack they talked. They talked a oh, ton yeah. of smack to a team that swept you, that then beat you again in five games. It gets to the point like you, you, you guys. I've never seen the team fall off. We're seeing a lot of fall offs. Like the Lakers win a title, then they miss a play in, they miss the playoffs, or they make a play. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. 
losing in the first round. Uh, they did. They played in the conference finals last year. I don't know how. They went up against a young Memphis team, and that's when it became father time basketball. The game slowed down for those guys, and they just didn't recover. Larry's down in Louisiana, and he said that the uh, the the New Orleans was just happy to make the playoffs. So that's their standard right there. And then you got the Lakers can now have the in season tournament championship parade. Wow! Oh, in season championship. It, it, what in season championship team you know loses in the first round? The Lakers. All in Lakers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, 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 it's I, like I, winning I, the Maui Invitational. So. <laughs> I saw this the other day. It is. It was, I mean, LeBron's LeBron's the greatest basketball player. I'll give him that. Or as basketball athlete, I'll give him that. But how many franchises has he put brought on to? I want my buddies here just so I can pat my stats. It's fair. It's fair. Um, by the way, I want to bring a comment up that Larry did a couple of minutes ago, by the way. Um, uh, and th this is – we've talked about this, but we can still bring it up again. And the Lakers are talking about drafting Bronny to keep LeBron. Before anybody speaks, by the way, believe that, Lakers. Believe that. And he will probably stay. But what I'm saying is this. The last time he told a team to draft a guard, the Heat got stuck with Shabazz Napier, and he still went back to Cleveland. And Napier was a nothing for the Miami Heat. Thank you very much. Oh, so let's go back to Cleveland days when it was uh, – oh, crap. Who was – he went to Minnesota instead. Mo Williams? No, not Mo Williams. Uh, oh, crap. I'm drawing a blank. But it's like, oh, let's bring him in and keep LeBron and Bar LeBron jump to Miami. Was it uh, – oh, sh Devin Oh, uh, I'm, I'm drawing blanks right now. But Oh, wait a minute. Larry's got it. Hold on. Anderson Verja. Uh, no, go. Verja was going through a trade. It was uh, – Cleveland had, had like one of the top draft picks. They were trying to get LeBron back. No, it was when LeBron came back. Oh, Wiggins. They got rid of Wiggins. Yeah, yeah they and, drafted and, Wiggins, and then they traded him. Yeah, they traded him yeah. to Minnesota to get the whole Kevin Love – Trade and all that. Yes, stuff. because Wiggins ended up at Minnesota and Love came to Cleveland. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, I mean, LeBron, greatest. I, I will say he's greatest basketball athlete ever with what he's done. I will never say he's the greatest basketball player, but he's destroyed franchises when he's come in and left. Mm -hmm. And and can I just say, like, say what you will about the Miami Heat and so forth. Honestly. You got to give it up to the Godfather Pat Riley, honestly, oh. and and how he how he disrespected that man and instead wanted to watch the World Cup. You know, I mean, he's also disrespected a lot of the people that have pulled the strings and so forth. And realistically, if Jordan did it, Jordan didn't make it very known. You know, he was very quiet behind the scenes, but Jordan was loyal. Uh, uh, yeah, Florida was not very quiet when it came behind with behind the scenes when it came to the Wizards and the uh, Hornets slash Wildcats. Yeah, whatever they were called. Yeah, it might be a good thing that Jordan sold off his shares as a Hornets minority owner and went to the NASCAR. Run. Love Jordan death, but it's competitive nature took the best of him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I, I guess maybe it was more the player Jordan like when it be, when it came to the and and listen the Bulls deserved and and Larry I know you're a big Bulls fan and so forth like that the Bulls ownership owned or or, or deserved what's happened to them after they broke up that team I mean they could have kept that thing going for as long as they really wanted to to be honest with you so yeah how they did Phil Jackson and everything of course we wouldn't have gotten a great victory but. You know, I just, just it's, it's incredible the Bulls still have not gotten back there. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. I agree with that. The decision 2010 is why he's hated. 
Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh now we're waiting for the decision of twenty twenty four. Especially after his comments the other night with uh, when they asked like, "Hey, this is your last time as a Laker?" He's going to go wherever his son is, and I will put money on his. So if he can convince Cleveland to draft Bronny, Bron will go back to Cleveland, play one season, and retire as a Cav because he is the boy from Akron. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I will put my, my paycheck on that. Speaking of Cleveland, they're in a dogfight right now with uh, the Magic. The Magic are up by two with 642 left. That game is on NBA TV. That's been an interesting series to watch. That series and the series between the Clippers and the Mavericks have been the two most entertaining in this first round. Clippers have been very entertaining. entertaining. Oh, my God. Clippers Magic. I mean, Clippers – the Clippers Mavericks have been just phenomenal watch. The Cavs Magic have been good too. I guess. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That egomaniac will do a farewell tour to mirror what Kobe did. Larry Frank. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I wonder if he will announce this is his final year or whatever like that, just to be with his son. So. I'm not- him retiring at 23 years, you know, 23. The that would be amazing. But would that be the record? I mean, I know that, uh, what was it? Kareem played 20, if I'm not mistaken. Kareem played 20. Yeah, Kareem played 20. Yeah. And, of course, he was a shell of himself at the end. But because big guys really don't last that long. But Kareem took care of himself and paced mm-hmm. himself, I felt. So. Yeah, the yoga, yoga kept Kareem into him. Because the Showtime Lakers were not, you know, Showtime. You know, they when when they passed that buck off to uh, to Jordan and the Bulls. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, so while we uh, we were we were talking about uh, West basketball in our yeah. earlier in the show. Yeah, talk about that too, pair. So as you know, I want to say. Okay. Payouts for West are going to be on the uh, for returning students. Mm -hmm. And then I want to say it's that following Thursday, the next Thursday. I want to make sure it should be on the IG page. I want to go back on here and make sure we got these days correct. I'm I'm really excited about how they're gonna look though. Um got to talk to Garrett Birch today. The ankle is getting better. Um, you know what I'm saying? He's uh, still rehabbing and I just look for him to have a phenomenal year. Like he's one of those guys that I think some of the smaller schools, some of the mid majors are gonna they they're gonna need shooting and this dude can just he can really shoot. Like this dude can really shoot. He's a phenomenal. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm gonna tell you this. Um, though that I would love. I guess the tryout's closed, but I would just love to just see what what they look like. You know, where's that fire? Because the the drive for that championship that we've been talking about starts there. You know what I mean? Honestly, so yeah, that's just me. So. Is it satisfying? Yeah, I cannot wait. I really can't, man. Like spring football, got basketball, trot like that. We in a good time right now. We are. We are. Um, I've got some I've got some news. Uh West Soccer tonight uh I went over to Webb and 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 shut them out four to nothing. They've got a huge home game on Thursday at West against Bearden. And the West students and alumni get in for free, by the way. So a little rebel soccer. Uh, going on. So shout out to them for Blank and Webb. And then uh, baseball starts their district tournament uh, tomorrow against Hardin Valley. And um, the winner of that gets to play Farragut, which is such a consolation prize. Um, It's a double elimination tournament. But what I did want to do is definitely give um, a shout out to the all district rebels that made it for baseball. Um, All district was sophomore infielder Mason uh, uh, Duggan. 
uh, senior pitcher slash first baseman Andrew Lawler. Uh, honorable mention was senior uh, catcher Connor Glick and senior first baseman John Whitesell, who was offensive lineman for West this past year. And academic all district was senior infielder Owen Winter. So salute to those five rebels with a cause, uh, making the all district honorable mention and academic all district for the 2024 KF, uh, KIL. So, That's what's up, man. Congratulations to those guys. Congrats to those boys. Crazy. I don't even. I don't even think we've had even a basketball banquet. Or if we did, I never. I don't even know if we did have. It. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I still haven't gotten my second ring yet, so I don't know what that's going on. I for sure thought it was going to be last week when uh, because they gave them to the boys right before prom last year. So I'm getting all giddy, and there's there was no rings given. So that's no rings given. Hey, hey, you got you got three more days. You don't get no ring, no nothing. Can't you, you get no play. You get no play. I don't even know if there's the. I don't even know if they had the banquet. Uh, but I, I've seen they did go to prom. I did see that. Yeah, no um, prom. Prom was probably very nice last week and so forth. So, so I got prom. I got proms this weekend. I, I definitely, definitely. You know, was, uh, well, West's was last Saturday. I think Bearden's is this Saturday. Bearden's is this Saturday. So yeah. 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 They, Fine, they, Fine. they always Fine. tried to space those a week out because they knew that somebody had a boyfriend or a girlfriend probably. And could uh, uh, the baseball tournament starts this weekend, and my daughter, boyfriend, plays for Hard Valley. He's like, oh, hey, I can't make it a prom because I got district tournament this weekend. Come on. Come on now. Hey, but but, but she, my boss, boss my middle kid, a 17-year-old, she knocked out 12 and a half hours of uh, community service hours. At Bearden as a uh, quote unquote gender child labor to make it. <laughs> so, is there graduation? Is, there's graduation coming up for her, right? Like, uh, no, 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 my, my oldest, uh, she uh, unfortunately, due to some mental health issues, was it able to graduate? Oh, okay. she, had, she had to go through some stuff. Uh, I had to drop out of high school. My oldest one would have graduated uh, next weekend. But so now I'm going to live all the senior and junior moments with my junior child. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So it, it's uh, instead of, you know, I think, oh, I get, I get the double dose. I got the, I got to live vicariously through one child. Well, there you go. There you go. So, so you know, that, dad's crying a few tears here and there. It's like, oh, my baby, my, my baby girl is is doing this and doing that. But hey, she's got her dress, she's got her shoes, she's got her accessories. Dad came through. With it mattered. That's what great fathers do, man. And you're a great father. That's yeah. Like I said, only dads, only dads. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, ladies, if you're watching this guy, man, he I'm, I'm sure he'll whine and dine. He's a good dude. So there we go. So, yeah, for sure. So um, two pair. Let me ask you this. Um, talking about basketball, you know, the girls tryouts coming up, the boys tryouts coming up. May is going to be a loaded month, man, for basketball. So. Yeah, uh, we, we've we got the boys. They try out Monday, May the 13th. Yeah, I, I just pulled up on Instagram. For so, current. And then Thursday, we got May 23rd for Rising Freshmen. Both were at 345, located at the main gym. Um, I, I ain't going to lie, man. It's a lot of talent returning on this man, team. Man, if, you, if you look at just our, our district zone where it comes to kids we pull in, you know, we got we got DeVille, we got Sequoia Hills, as my, my favorite football coach would say. If it wasn't for Webb, West would be a dominant school in all sports mm -hmm. because of uh, all the kids that get the AAU money for uh, from over in uh, Sequoia Hills or on Cherokee Boulevard. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, if you don't like, you don't have the if you don't have Webb, because Webb gets a lot of gets a lot of West kids. Yep. Right. You don't have C A K. You have C A K. You don't have Web. You don't have Catholic. And Catholic, we all know, pumps out D one kids. Kids that don't go to Catholic go to like the kids. Like C A K gets a certain group of kids. You know what I'm saying? They get like a certain. Mm -hmm. group. Um, I'll, I'll put it this way: just from my, my youth experience, 
Um, I've had parents and or excuse me, I've had coaches come up from those three programs, Webb, CAK, Catholic, to recruit players. Man, that, that stuff starts early. You get those kids in the Bearden Middle School program and the Northwest and whatever fears we get from the Ville. West dominates across the board mm-hmm. because we we are the feeder, like we are the most diverse school ever. Look at where we're located. We pull everyone. Yep. You got Rock Hill, school. Westmoreland Hills, you know, Western Ave, Middlebrook. I mean, you you take. Because if I'm correct, BT, correct me on this one. West pulls all of university and up to uh, Knoxville College. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Right, right before you hit, uh, right before you hit, uh, uh, is that Fifth Ave right there? Before you hit Arthur? Yeah, like the West kids, the West kids are going to be. You're just if if I'm looking at if I'm facing west of yeah. university, basically everything maybe a quarter of a block from games. Yeah, because because west you you would get some Lonsdale kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some kids would yeah, be. I, I, um, I, I, I lived over in Lonsdale. Like, I mean, that's, that's West kids. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, we're, we're gonna, we're, it's going to give it to me because you know, uh, you know, I'm going to get you over in the bill. You get Mechanicsville, Gross Drive, uh, University Avenue, Door. Well, not Door. I say up to about uh, – because some of those kids that live on Wallace and Dunbar and Mechanicsville yeah. go to yeah, so, it was, uh, uh, it's either you it's Daniel Thompson. It's Daniel Thompson. Thompson's territory, like full. It's, it's it yeah. that the Mechanicsville area, Mechanicsville area is Fulton and West. Yeah, dominant. Uh, you remember uh, Daniel Thompson? Yeah, yeah, like literally, like halfway through the build. Fulton. Yeah, went to Fulton. Yeah, but if you go to, like McGee Street over. West. Yeah. Yeah, we went to middle school with Daniel. Yep. <laughs> went to middle school with Daniel. That's crazy. Um, Larry had a question, by the way, in the comment box. Uh, quick thoughts on the NFL draft. Are you all happy with your team selections? That's not a bad topic. So, Titans could have done better, but uh, I guarantee Joe Milton the third becomes a tight end in New England. Oh, we didn't spend that time. We didn't spend any time on the draft. My bad. Uh, well, what I will say with the draft is it was everything I expected and didn't expect. As far as the wide receivers, um, I think I was off by one pick. I didn't think neighbors would go first. I. No, I didn't think neighbors would go. Se- uh, did he go second? Yeah, because Marvin Harrison went Neighbor, first. Second yeah, at Harrison. I feel, I feel like this was the most lackluster draft ever. It was. It, I, the I, joke was the Penix thing with the Falcons. I, I didn't understand that. Oh, yeah. oh left, left handed quarterback going to Atlanta. Let's watch out. Well, Not I like, it. I, I like it, it though. I like it. Yeah. Here's why. Here's why. True cousins. Cousins are on the downside. Here's what will be will be the will be the franchise quarterback for that. This is what I think. You pay Kirk Cousins all that money, right? You, you, it's a win lose if you do, because you then don't have to worry about paying somebody that type of money if Penny steps in, because mm-hmm. he can be on a rookie salary. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean so, you look at Penix when you look at a running back drafted in the NFL. You get everything you can out of him in his first contract. Yeah. If, if, he, if he's the man, you give him the second one. If he's not, you send him off. It's the way every running back is in the draft now. Mm-hmm. 
Running backs are now the new receiver. I, I, I'm going to tell you this. We yeah. talked about it briefly last week that we didn't think that who was going to be the first running back. It ended up being Benson from Florida State, but that's on the third round. When have you ever seen that, that the running backs are now third-round guys? Well, um, the, the running backs are expendable. Yeah. They, they get beat up in college because that I mean, the college game is still what it is. You can look at you can look at Pruitt's offense, but any offense across the league, it's – I'm going to abuse my running back. I'm going to exploit my receivers. But once they get to the, once they get to the league, they are a commodity. And once they're done, you find the next one who's got fresh legs. It used to be that was how you looked at your receivers. I looked at your running backs that way. Mm-hmm. The league has changed. Running backs are now just a hey, let me get what I can out of you, and I'll, and I get my first contract. I pay less money. I get you in a, a later round and go on to the next one. Yeah, Larry said Penix was a good pick. That's your quarterback of the future. He can learn from cousins like Rogers to Favre. Yeah, yeah I mean, Rogers they learned anything from Favre. Like, Favre it's Favre. like Hewlett Rivers to Drew Brees. It's the yes. what the yes. NFL is built on. Yes. And it's like if you didn't if you didn't pick Penix, right? If Penix falls to the Las Vegas Raiders, <laughs> you you can chalk it up. <laughs> he would he would put he would put that 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 type of team that CJ Stroud had with the Texans. It'd be almost the same thing. Because you see, you see the action from uh, Stroud when they didn't draft the receiver. That Las Vegas defense, my bad. What were we saying, Shane? My fault. When uh, Stroud saw the receiver pick for uh, for them, and he's like, "What?" Yeah. Like he knew what he knows, what he needs, and the franchise is the pick what he needs to say for them to succeed. Because let's face it, AFC South is up and down. Yeah, Titans can do it, Colts can do it, Jags can do it, Texans can do it. Texas probably lead the way when it comes to AFC South with what they can pull, especially with Stroud at quarterback. I but, feel like the Jaguars, the Jaguars should have been the the Jag if 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 uh, Trevor Lawrence doesn't get hurt, they were well on the way to being the the AFC champions. It just Texas defense, and then the the way that. They rebounded with those injuries to the wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Like they just bounced back. They bounced back like crazy because the 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 weapons that this dude has now, mm-hmm. AFC South, he's got Nico Collins, Tank Dale, <laughs> Stefan Diggs. <laughs> yeah, Stefan Diggs now there. So shoot. So oh, yeah. hey, so can I say this real quick? Why do I feel that the Patriots knocked it out of the park with Drake May as the quarterback? Is he going to be the next Tom Brady for them? I mean, because he was great at North Carolina. He was. He was he their great in North Carolina. He didn't have any help. But it, it depends on what coaching staff there. He's they, got all the measurables. He can read defenses. He can make plays. He can put teams on his back. Um, from what I got to watch him, I got to watch him the uh, it wasn't the Virginia game. I got to watch him against Wake Forest one time. I got to see him against Duke, of course, mm-hmm. but it was what he does against like the bigger competition. Like well, what he does, he did. He about gift wrapped a pass to Nate Wiggins. Yeah, he- <laughs> He tore uh, – not that Miami's worth anything. They were trash this past year. But I watched him from the front row at Keenan Stadium there, and I watched him just tear up Miami's secondary like it hadn't been torn up before up to that point that year. And uh, realistically, it was just uh, it was just crazy, you know, to see him. So I thought that was a great yeah. thing. I also thought um, – uh, your thoughts on Bo Nix going 12th overall? Because some people have really criticized Bo Nix that he can't even throw the ball downfield, but yet he was picked 12th and so forth in that first round. Bo Nix. So, so Sean Payton got rid of Russell Wilson for Bo Nix. Horrible. 
Oh, game game manager. They rely on the run game. The Steelers. The Steelers had hit it out of the park. The Steelers know how to draft though. Like the Steelers know how to win championships. You're right. Like I, I'm a Steelers and a Falcons fan. If you want to talk about phenomenal draft, the only I I wish they would have either got Quinion Mitchell or Cooper DeJean from uh, Iowa. I, I like I like Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. I think Philadelphia got a steal with those two as cornerbacks because they definitely needed secondary help because their secondary is atrocious or they played atrocious, especially in Tampa Bay in the playoffs. Horrible. I mean, I mean can you doubt Tomlin with everything he's done? No, you can't. I mean, I mean, has he ever had a sub five hundred season? Has he been there? Great. I, I would say he's great Steelers coach ever. Uh, he's got a better record than Coward. He's got a better record than Coward, but Chuck Noll is the standard. Though. Oh yeah, because of the four Super Bowls and the Steel Curtain. <laughs> about four Super Bowls, dude. Yeah, yeah. Steel Curtain defense. <laughs> but, the, but, the of, yeah. but the level of competition from back then to now. Well. I mean, it was more. It was more teams now. But if you look at Chuck Noll's resume, like they beat great teams to win those Super Bowls. It wasn't yeah. a. It wasn't a bunch of you know. As man. as, as, one, as uh, one of my buddies who uh, played for uh, UT, uh, Jason Swain, he said if he had boy, if he had something, he'd rather play for Coach Chalmers. Yeah. And all I know is how to develop. No, he does, man. He does well. He really does. Does anybody disagree with me that the team that had the worst draft just shows what a horrible franchise they are? They are they stink. Is the Redskins slash Commandos? Um, the Commandos atrocious, atrocious. Uh, uh, I do like the Jaden Daniels pick. Oh, that was fine. But after that, they needed cornerbacks. They needed offensive tackles. They needed wide receivers. And instead, they're drafting defensive tackles and nickelbacks that are well undersized of what you needed and just made really bad decisions, I thought. I, that just me. so. Yeah. Hold on. You said – who do you say stink again? Who'd the Commanders. Say? The Commanders. The Washington. Oh, no, let's look at their draft grade. I mean, they're, 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 they're the Redskins still. They're still the Redskins. They're the Redskins. I will they're never the call them the Commanders. <laughs> <laughs> they're the Redskins. Hey, hey, two pair. How many hats did you sell back in the day at Foot Locker with that emblem? Honestly, come on now. Oh, you man. know the red it, dude. Uh, I I don't get it, man. Like the Redskins were always. Oh, oh, oh damn! The, he he went hard at LSU being a Louisiana guy. Jaden Daniels will be Jamarcus Russell without the night pool hangovers. So. Jaden Daniels is hurry in defense, bro. Jaden Daniels, dude. Uh, I I. I you know what? The commanders got an A. Oh, for what? They got an A. They got a, okay. Daniels is QB three behind Drake May on both Pro Football Big Boards and Consensus Big Board, but the regime in Washington takes two overall. Daniels does make sense as a theoretical fit in Kingsbury spread to run offense that will allow Daniels to add in the run game and get the ball out to players. Okay. All right. Well, on that little thing that you're looking at, who got an F? Who who absolutely stunk, according to them? Or whatever? Uh, oh, oh, I'm, I'm scrolling through the grades right now. Uh, I'm on pro football focus. This is pretty good stuff. Actually, pro football focus grades the college guys after games and will tell you who did good and who stunk. In a game. Oh, All right. So they got, they got a Luke McCaffrey in the third round. I forgot that. They got uh they Oh, got is that Christian's little brother? Christian's little brother from okay. Rice. The, the famous McCaffrey one. family. So yeah. yeah. Them dudes can ball. Them some they, ballers right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Unanimously, the Cardinals got A. What? Oh, come on. They did? Tampa Bay got an A. Uh, the Bears got an A. But it's also Caleb Williams, if you think about it. Hey, hey I, 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 I love this. 
Daniels had neighbors, Thomas, and other weapons at LSU. He got nothing but hope and aspirations in Washington. <laughs> Joe Biden would pass for more touchdowns. Joe Biden. Oh, hey, Larry Frank be breathing, it, bro. Oh, oh my man, man. He he is, man. man. I love me some Larry Frank, man. Larry He's Frank breathes it. Oh my God. I love looking back at these shows and seeing what Larry Frank is saying. Oh, he's Larry Frank. That's my big brother from Louisiana. San Francisco got a B plus. The Steelers got an A plus draft. They deserve that. They deserve that based on their draft. But they always do well draft wise, I think. So Fon Fon Fontanu is gonna be a hot future Hall of Famer. <laughs> What did my Dolphins get? An F minus or whatever? <laughs> or the Titans? F minus? You said with Miami yet? Yeah, we're the Dolphins. They get an F. I mean, probably. I don't know. Miami drafts pretty well. Miami got, oh, Miami got a B minus. B minus? Wow, that's, that's higher than I thought. What about the Titans or what happened? I don't feel like they're B minus. Like, hold on. We want to so, talk about the Titans. <laughs> so, so okay. Chop Robinson, your first round pick, your edge rusher, he was a 40 on their PFF board. Uh -huh. Could be considered a bit of a reach, but his potential is unde undeniable. And he has dimensions of power and speed in his pass rush um, arsenal. Um, they went with Parker, pa no, Patrick Paul. Out of Houston to tackle. He was their 55th pick. He was their sec second round. Uh, Jalen Wright, who I think in that offense. That was oh, a good pick. You know, that was right. a good pick for them. I, I like Jalen Wright. Yeah. They needed I mean, a that, that might be the, the orange color glasses on my aspect, but I think he was a good fit there. No, he was a good pick. He was a good pick. And and the sad thing is the reason why they took that defensive end or, or chop that you're talking about is because uh, Jalen's not going to be back for them. He tore his Achilles late in the year for the Dolphins, and uh, they, they don't have a pass rusher at this point. And Wilkins went free agent. Um, like, in their later rounds, I can see why they got a B-. minus. Um, they picked Malik Washington out of Virginia. Hmm. Now – if these dudes hit, like if Malik Washington and Taj Washington out of USC, if those dudes can become bona fide guys with uh, McDaniel, because what he's already been able to do with the the, the flashy guys with the Tyreek, like those dudes are for mm -hmm. like, You know what they're going to bring if they can stay healthy. So, yeah, yeah, if you, you bring in those guys with, and then having Jalen Wright as your third or fourth back mm -hmm. behind Mozart, Mozart and A Chain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, and I like A Chain. A, a Chain uh, couldn't stay healthy, unfortunately, but when he was in there for the Dolphins, he made some plays for them. So, yeah, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the Dolphins draft grade right now, overall B. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, Dolphins can call them issues in the FC East. I'm just, I, I, I'm just curious, you know, like how. It, it just seems like the, the, the mainstay teams just stay good, you know, and yet here you have a draft that you can pick players and maybe do good trade. But I just think the lack uh, or, 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 I don't know, scouts or whatever, there's a lot more misses than there are with some of these teams that will just be like always bad in my opinion. So, yeah. I want to tell you uh, who got it really right. Low key. Los Angeles Rams got it right, low key. Check this out. They draft two guys off a of starting defensive line that was 13 and 0. That a boy. You get Jared Verse from Florida State. Mm. You get Braden Fisk from Florida State back to back. That that so that sold me that you're look you got to replace Donald in the middle and you get that with who they drafted uh, last year and Byron Young from UT. Oh, yeah. That's a crazy defensive line. Like, that coaching staff is very good. You know, let's not forget, they won a Super Bowl a couple of years back. They had some bad luck with injuries. 
um, you know, they, they know what's going on. That's a that's a, a good organization. Over there. Yeah, definitely good organization. And you know, for them to get to the playoffs last year, um, lose. Yeah, Cam, Cam, Cam Kitchens. Uh, yeah, he safety. was the best player from the U, so he was. And, yeah. Man, as a safety, you won't talk about. Is he a Miami guy? Is he a good player or is he a Miami guy? Cam. He's a good player. No, he was probably Miami's best player last year. But can I tell you this, though? He would be fourth string behind Kenny Phillips, Ed Reed, and Sean Taylor. If that's where He's not that. He's not those guys. But he could be special in his own right. He's not as fast, but he's a smart player. And uh, uh, that's. But he got hurt, and he came back, played through it. But the the one the one player that intrigues me is James Williams from the Canes. They got drafted by the Titans. He really should have been playing linebacker. He's too big to play safety. And if you listen to his uh, phone call when he got drafted, he was crying on the phone because he was just grateful to be drafted and not some undrafted free agent. And that just shows who's advising these guys to go to the draft. You know, like I mean, you're you're told that you're going to be a first day or second day pick. And you're at the end of the seventh round. I mean, that's really uh, – Larry Frank's a big Miami fan like me, and and we'll tell you, we've gone from the team that put the most first-rounders out there year in and year out to now we're putting the best seventh-rounders. And that's where the U is right now and so forth. Until they can get back to putting people in the first round, they, they ain't nothing at this point. That's a relic from the past. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, when, when you talked about uh, Kitchens, did he – did you see this? Um, his 90 grade in 2022 ranked fifth in all of college football. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty, it's pretty speaking high praise of him, man. Like, well, here's the other thing, too. Larry Frank said it best. Um, uh, um, he will flourish because he's no longer under crystal ball. So, I mean, so yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. So, yeah, yeah. James Williams was crying because he was freed from Cristobal. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's a mess down there in Miami. I know that they have some guys coming in that are talented, but uh, it just seems talented guys just do not get the coaching at Miami, and then they go to the pros and blow up. Look at Sam Shields. So, yeah. Uh, let me let me say this. <laughs> hey, the, the Los Angeles Chargers are going to be a problem. <laughs> With Harbaugh, with Harbaugh. Yeah. Can I tell you their draft? Yeah, go for it. I'm curious. Joe Alt from Notre Dame, probably the best tackle in in the nation. Mm-hmm. Lad McConkey. Oh, I love that pick. Oh, I love that pick of Lad McConkey. I love the. Pick. Hey, listen, you know I'm a Tennessee guy, but that guy for Georgia. He made Florida State look like he was like a video game when he scored a touchdown to pair no hate there. But I was like, this guy. And he was like not even full strength all year. Keep going. Hey, none taken. None taken. Yeah. I love Donkey out of Georgia. Junior Colson out of Michigan. Wow. Uh Justin Ibajiba. Is it Ibajiba? Ibajiba. Yeah. Ibi. Ibaji. Man, I don't want to mess up his name. You know, I done messed up so many names here. And <laughs> yeah, you should pronounce them better, you know. Use your phonetics. Come on. Now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he's from Alabama. Then uh, Tarheeb Steele, the cornerback out of Maryland. Then they go back to Notre Dame and get Cam Hardick cornerback. Then they go to Troy to get Kamani uh, Vidal. Then they get the seventh round. They get Jerry Rice's kid, Brendan Rice, from USC. And uh, their last pick is Cornelius Johnson out of Michigan. And you know what that tells me? You know what that tells me? uh, He paid attention. Who's that? T.O.'s son got picked up. Is he a free agent? T.O.'s son did? Yeah. Okay. What team? I can't remember. I saw it the other day. All I'm going to say, too, Pair, about that draft, it's clear Harbaugh paid attention to the big-name teams last year and who was good and who wasn't. Look, at he not only picked a couple of his Michigan guys, he went to Georgia to find somebody, USC, Notre Dame, Troy. All these teams were very solid last year, despite not winning at all, but they were solid. And Georgia speaks for itself, goodness gracious. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, they are doing well in the NFL compared to what they were in college. 
Yeah, I like. Uh, I I I kind of saw. Um, T.O. Oh, I got a quick, quick. T.O. son. I want to see time with the 49ers as an undrafted free agent. Mm. Mm. Okay. I like the fact that, you know, Harbaugh went back to Michigan to get his guys mm-hmm. and to get Cornelius Johnson, you know what I'm saying, who, who won. He knew the sanctions were coming. <laughs> oh, can I give a shout out to another player from that Michigan team who I actually like to watch? And he might be undersized, but damn it, he played hard. Blake Corum. And who drafted him, by the Man. way? Third round pick, too. I love the fact that. Blake Corum is with the Rams because yeah, look at that kind of, pick. He he he, he kind of fits that whole thing that Austin Eckler. I mean, he racked up twenty seven touchdowns. Um, he plays with he heart. Kind of, he, he kind of reminds me of Tyron Williams, Austin Eckler type running back. I think he did to take Bo Nix like that. He must have spent some time in the Denver dispensary. So. <laughs> like, how do you get rid of Russell? Uh, dude, I, I thought Russell was, play, was playing great last year. He had weapons. He had no Not weapons. early in the year. Not early in the year, but as the season went on, he went in Buffalo and won. I, I still don't know why Jerry Judy – I thought Jerry Judy would be the best of all the receivers at Alabama, and he just hasn't lived up to the hype. No, it's, it's been either Devontae or Jalen Waddle. Oh, without a doubt, without it's a doubt. And then, of course, Ruggs ruined it for himself, driving 100 miles per hour, killing somebody. So, yeah, you know what, I'm saying? Um, what a waste. When you look at you look at how good Jalen Waddle has been, and, and De- Devontae Smith is a clear number. One guy, like I think he's going to be the guy this year for sure as the number one. He's got oh to be. This he, point. his his breakaway speed, him off the right, like he's the, an elite route runner. This he yeah. can run a route tree. He just makes plays. Yeah, but yeah, there you go. Talking about the Rams and their great draft. I mean, they got Blake Corum. Goodness gracious, it fits. So they got a lot of these teams know what they needed to replace guys that are. Getting to that age that they're they're almost done. Their playing careers are almost done. So, like I said, it, it's weird that uh, this draft was so lackluster, but teams pick up who they need. Mm-hmm. How about this? How about the fact that they set the record with like seven hundred and fifty thousand fans or something outside? Man, it's it's Detroit. They love football. Yo, mm-hmm. did you hear today that uh? Barry Sanders cut all ties with involved Madden. Really? Yeah. I didn't hear that. No, I didn't. It's on. It's on Twitter. Well, who now? Barry Sanders cut all ties with Madden football using his likeness. So, man, something's going on there. Real. But Barry, Barry, I was a running back, and that's who I modeled my game after. So Barry Sanders is not doing anything with Madden anymore. No, he will not let he will not let use his likeness or anything. So we need a new we need a new two uh, K NFL. Um, real quick, wanted to give an update. Uh, Milwaukee is ahead by five points at halftime over the Pacers, and despite another unbelievable game from Paolo Bunkero, he's a bad Italian dude, by the way. He is thirty nine points to tonight. But they lost by one point to the Cavs, so now it goes back to Orlando for Game Six. But man, Orlando could have taken the lead and maybe stolen one, you know, at home court. Now they just got to save face to go back for Game Seven. So, Italian, yeah. are you related to Paulo? I wish I was. Shit. So, <laughs> I, I, let me tell you something. His genes. His dad was a basketball player. His mama was a basketball player. Italian, I mean, God, he's got it all. So, shoot. Good, good. 6, 10, 240, what a, I mean, goodness gracious. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, Curly hair. <laughs> I will say I will say the guy that we're going to be talking about is one of the best players in this draft. Uh, I just don't know if he's ever going to be getting the ball. Brock Bowers going to the Raiders. Yeah. Ooh, he's yeah. going to be a stud. 
they, <laughs> they, hey, they play in a nice stadium. It's a really fancy, nice stadium they play in. So. They play in a great stadium. <laughs> the second contract will be what makes it breaks his career. Yeah, but he'll he'll go somewhere else for that second contract. I mean, I I hope. I hope, man. He's. I hope he's there, and they got to get. They get a quarterback. I would love to have seen Michael Penix, and I. I mean, Bowers was not. Bowers was coming off the board early. Like mm-hmm. he was coming off the board. I'm just surprised that Bowers dropped thirteen. Yeah, I wonder if the injury concerns may have hurt, you know, and so forth. Maybe just a a little bit. Um, to Shane's credit, I was going to say something, but then I reminded what he just said a few minutes ago. This is not a running back league anymore. It just is unbelievable the day that you see tight ends picked before running backs. You know what I mean? But they're not blocking anymore. They are now part of the passing game. Look at Kelsey. He just signed some lifetime deal, $34 million or something like that yesterday. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, Indianapolis, they hit it out the park. They had an A-plus. God, it seems like they just haven't done nothing in a couple of years. I, I like what they did with drafting Latu, Mitchell. Um, let me see who else do I know on this. Uh, oh, Jalen Simpson from um, Auburn. I like him. I like Jalen Simpson from Auburn. He was a pretty good ball player. Who 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 really did they give anybody a D or anything like that? I I I mean, who are some bad teams that we've not mentioned? Did, did the Panthers sink it up again? The Panthers or you know Houston I mean, drafted well. Green Bay drafted well. Green Bay got a B plus. What Dallas, they say about the Bears? Dallas got a B minus. Cleveland wow. got a C plus. Uh, Is anybody here a Cowboys fan by any chance? No. Uh, Cincinnati. Oh. Cincinnati got a B plus. Hey, Ellie went back to uh, Dallas. That's what I was about to say. The YMCA got back together again with the Village people, all reuniting with Zeke Elliott back there now. So yeah. I will say this though, uh, Chicago, Chicago did get an A. Chicago got a. Wow. Let's see if uh, it translates. Worst grade I'm seeing is the Raiders. They got a D. The Raiders got a D. Well, see, I'm looking at Pro Football Focus. Carolina got a C. See, that's they stink. They, they stink. stink. Yeah. Carolina stinks. Uh, Buffalo. What did the Texans get? Did the Texans get a good grade? Yeah, uh, Texans got a B plus. Oh, there you go. Okay, but they always draft the way they. I mean, they they've hit it out the park the last two years. They've got uh, a good coaching staff. Buffalo now. was a B minus. Buffalo was a B minus. Let me see. Oh, Baltimore was an A minus. Okay. Nice. What about the Jets? J E T S. Jets. 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 Atlanta got a C minus. Atlanta got a C minus. Dallas has already been eliminated from the playoffs. Uh, who did, who else? You said the Jets. The other yeah. one I'm seeing, this is from uh, USA Today. The Browns got a D. The Jets got an A. Jets got an A. So the Browns, the fighting Browns got, got a D So from USA Today. So. I like it. It's the Browns. I like what it has them as the win. Uh, I, I like I like what New York did. It wasn't bad. Shout out to the Cleveland Cavs, man. It's, yeah, it's playoffs. Won. It's playoffs, man. So, well, what about a uh, real quick? What about the Bengals? Um, you know, they 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 were kind of like a favorite last year, and then the whole Joe Burrow thing and everything. I mean. Did they draft pretty well, or what's going on with the You said Cincinnati? Yeah. Uh, Cincinnati got a B plus. There you go. Yeah, so. they got uh, – I like I like the Mims pick uh, from Georgia, uh, part of a, a championship line. Uh, I like the Chris Jenkins uh, – J- Chris Jenkins Jr. Mm. Dad played at Green Bay. Um, I, I like – 
getting him from Michigan. Um, I don't know. Chris Jenkins played for Green Bay and the Jets. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was making sure. I thought it was. I'm like, maybe I'm thinking of another Chris Jenkins. Same guy. Uh, Jerome Burton, who I liked at Alabama. Yeah, that he was, was good. Pick. Yeah, he was their best receiver. I like that pick. Uh, I like McKinley Jackson out of Texas A&M. He was a good player for them on a bad they team. They got him at the 96 pick, third round. I like what they did in the third round when they went Burton and Jackson. Then in the fourth round, uh, they got Eric All, the tight end from Iowa. Uh, he impressed, he <laughs> impressed me a lot. I like uh, that they draft the uh, Miami's center. Oh, yeah, he's good. Matt Lee. Yeah, Matt Lee. Matt yeah Lee. he's good. Yeah, um, I think he might play either center or guard in the in the National Football mm-hmm. League. He, he, what he, makes up for, he may not have the size to pair, but he's a student of the game. He's a very smart center, and uh, I really wish he would have come back again. Another guy that got some bad advice and left when I think maybe he could have been a third-round pick next year or something because you're not going to get bigger, but maybe you show out on a better team and get more exp- – I don't know. So, but, you know. Yeah, he was uh, exceptional in 2023 with the Hurricanes, ranked 10th among FBS centers in pro football focus grade. He did mm-hmm. not allow a single sack on 414 pass-blocking snaps. Mm-hmm. He played all year. He was a great. He was a he was a great anchor to that line for Miami last year. So yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, Cleveland getting a C plus. They, I like the Michael Hall draft pick, but they didn't draft their first pick didn't become into the second round. So they went for a need. I, I'm going to tell you this. Um, looking at the all the draft grades and, and everything that I'm looking at right now. Thank God that there is hope that the Chargers can challenge in that West because you might as well just give a wheelchair to the Chiefs to make the playoffs when you have stupid franchises like the Raiders and the Broncos doing what they're doing from what I'm looking at. Right? Yeah, I feel like the Raiders and the Broncos, I don't I didn't I didn't like I didn't like what the I like what the Raiders did with Bowers. Like Bowers was the, the 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 pick. I mean, you you got actually the best football player on the board at thirteen. He he's the he was the best on the board. Like we're talking like football players. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bowers was the guy. You know what I'm saying on the board. Denver 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 got an A minus on Pro Football Focus. I think they felt sorry for Sean Payton. That's what I think. So, but I don't know, man. Um, I just, I'm just not a. F- they, they, they have the worst quarterback room on paper. Mm-hmm. Like what Jared Stidham, uh, oh, oh, Wilson, Zach Wilson from the Jets. Yeah, their room is horrible, man. That's a horrible quarterback room. Horrible room. Let uh, Larry manage to outdo himself with this comment. Top news stories before the season starts: Jerry Jones fires McCarthy. Chiefs repeat as champs, and Kraft gets busted in a Chinese massage parlor with Diddy. So there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's midseason stuff right there. That is. Well, you, you know, it'd be crazy if the Chiefs did go for a three-peat because I don't think that's ever been done, has it? Like the in the NFL? No. Back-to-back no. has, but not three-peats. So. I love, I love looking at this on Pro Football Focus. I'm oh, Hey, two pair, you should look at Pro Football Focus. If you're ever wondering how a Vol did or Seminole or any of the teams you follow, because it tells you which players brought it individually. I mean, and they are as critical as critical when it comes to their performances individually oh, in the games. So, yeah, Pro Football yeah, I love Focus. it. It's so. phenomenal. Yeah, for sure. So. Well, guys, you know, we're getting to the two-hour mark and so forth. Uh, yeah. Any last thoughts before we wrap this one up? I know next week is going to be uh, another great one and so forth. And, uh, Shane, I loved having you on, man, and uh, glad to have you aboard on, with Rebels with a Cause now, man. So hey. what have you guys got tonight? Let me be on here every week. Hey, we got the uh, spring game next week, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep, spring game. And next Friday yeah. night, next next Friday night on the 10th uh, at 6 o'clock. Oh. <clears throat> it's called at Gibbs, so it should be a game time situation. Let's go live from there. Let's do it. I want to. I, I really want to go live. I, I can bring <clears> – <throat> the only thing I need 
is some type of a camera to maybe hook up to get all of us on live or what have you like that because no. obviously i've got my screen and everything like that i don't need the screen but i do have lights and so forth that we can go after the game is over and so forth and uh and and, and talk about what happened i think it'd be fun if we could all yeah I, i'm all for being there next week let's yeah. do this all right. I know what Terry said. Cooper, even if you get there late, man, that would be fun to do it, honestly. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd yeah, be cool. for sure. Hey, let's do it. I mean. Let's, Corrington let's... should be so lucky that Rebels with a Cause is going to be there and so forth like that. Hey, 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 Gibbs opened at their stadium for West to broadcast from it. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. Get you a pro camera high resolution. Okay, I'll see what I can do. So, yeah, for sure. I'll see what I can do with that. Um, but yeah, that would be, th this would be amazing if we could all, you know, get on there. And so I'm just breaking down what's going on during the weekend. There's an issue. Yeah, it'd be awesome. No, let's do it. So, and, and yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, the back to back champs, 29 and one record, you know, in the last two years, let's keep this thing rolling. I mean, uh, again, like I said, uh, uh, you see it below champs for 515 days and counting now. The Roman Reigns right now, a 5A. I like it. Uh, <laughs> hey, they miss him. They miss him, man. That 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 yo, Roman is missing Roman yo, Reigns. Did you see yo. the did you see the meme I put up about Cody Rhodes? Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 two pair. I'm telling you, it's like everybody was excited for five minutes and they're like, oh no, he's gone. Like we he, can't we don't have nobody to hate no more. Cody Rhodes is a horrible champ. <laughs> it's not. It's it's just. Hey, you I'm hear me? I know. I'm I'm legit. I'm legit. Give me the SummerSlam. Okay. Can can he be the champion till SummerSlam? Larry Frank hates him. That crying son of a bitch. I hate Cody. Look, he hates him. I mean, I, I'm not a big Cody fan, but it's like, can he get me? Can he get me to SummerSlam and make it believable that he is a champion? Like Roman Reigns, he made it so believable. I'm like, when is he ever going to lose? That's what I'm saying. It, it, it had to be a Herculean wrestler to break that streak. And again, I'm not trying to make excuses as a Roman fan, okay? He lost. But the thing is, bad writing on the WWE's part to always have the bloodline interfere. You should have built him as big as Brock. That's like he's almost unstoppable. But it was bad writing. And they're soap opera writers, man. That's what they are. So, they, yeah. they, they came into the fans that wanted Cody to finish his story. Yeah. yeah. And they the came story finished, and he got his little Rolex, his dad pawned, blah, 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 blah. They came in. Larry, Listen, Larry agrees with me. Do you guys agree with me on this? If his last name was not Runnels or Rhodes and it was Cody Jones, would anybody give a shit? They wouldn't, yeah. dude. Hey, 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 can we get Terry back up there one last time? Though? The, the, the Rhodes, the Cody Rhodes thing, like, I ain't going to lie. Him, him being the son of, the, like, Dusty. I mean, it's just, it's inevitable, like, but it's something that Dustin never could do. Mm -hmm. It's something I mean, gold, I mean, gold. A long time do. for a, a few minutes, and that was it. Yeah. I think gold dust, gold dust was the intercontinental champion, though. He was, he was. Um, I, I guess yeah, my thing is this. Story would have been better if they brought gold dust back. They've talked about bringing the intermingling everybody between other factions, but it oh, was Stardust was it cool. oh, Stardust. Stardust. Stardust was horrible. Gold Dust. Now Gold Dust was incredible. Stardust was horrible. Oh my god. And then he was purple and he had that little spirit fingers. I mean, oh my God. So it was so bad. So horrible. <clears throat> And, and then, you, you know what my favorite Cody highlight is? Is when he made fun of Big Show up until their WrestleMania match and Big Show knocked his ass out. That was a great story right there. So, I that mean, was great. Golly. I, I, I don't know. I just, like I said, there were so many guys that, and look, I'm not going to pretend like I'm some big dude because I'm not, but I'm not a WWE entertainer wrestler. 
But the truth of the matter is, is the guys that were always larger than life, the Brock Lesnar's, the Cena's, you know, Orton, uh, Batista, uh, I can keep going on and so forth like that. Somebody like that was believable to beat Roman Reigns. The um, better storyline right now is the new bloodline versus the old bloodline. It is. That is. It's like Civil War. It's Captain America Civil oh, yeah. War. It's the comic book nerd in yeah. me. I mean, I mean, we all know the Rocks to join uh, Solo. Uh, yeah. And so we'll keep the final ball steel tourneys that going on. And it's going to be Roman, Jay, and, and Jimmy going their shit. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a way to turn Roman uh, face. I guess it's a way to turn Roman yeah, face. Yeah, face from so. Nah, they don't need to turn no face though. No, he he no, he's a good bad guy. No, uh, all Goldust ever did was rub his chest and flirt with men. <laughs> hey, didn't Marlena leave him for Brian Pillman in that one episode of Raw? Hey, 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 but, but, but Terry, Terry was the best Ross. She was the best Ronald, so and she could smoke a cigar. She could probably yeah. smoke a cigar better, you know, honestly. Cody, Cody, couldn't, Cody, beat Cody couldn't beat Ray Ripley. Man, Real I Ripley. Miss her, dude. How did oh. that happen, by the way? Like, like, real quick. That was like, a fluke accident. That was, that was a fluke. I oh. mean, and then, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. You didn't even make Liv Morgan the champion. You told Becky, hey, you know that time off I was going to give you with your husband? We need you back to be champion. I Liv mean, Morgan's a fine champion. I mean, I mean, Liv she, Morgan is a fine champ. Yeah, like that was, she got hoes. That, that was whack as hell. Yeah. That was whack. Becky That's, is boring as hell. Watch her last she night is. Now. She is. I mean, dude, they, like, they, 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 back, they, they, she's just, let me live all day. The whole, yeah. the whole man thing is what did it and then it's like that wore off like yeah, he doesn't have that character. it's not even in her anymore like, that character that whole her calling herself the man was the shit that was cool but it's stale it's stale yeah. I mean if you think about it she was always the fourth fourth horsewoman compared to Charlotte Bailey and Sasha Banks she really was you know <laughs> and, and listen I, I I hate that Sasha Banks has gone crazy or whatever like that because she entertained the hell out of me when she was. Sasha in Banks was great, but you know, um, I was a fan. Um, I, I've always been a big fan of uh, Bianca Belair. She oh God, is, yes, Knoxville. Oh my God, great. but yeah, when you talk about in the ring uh, I, and I was gonna give props to you to track team with her, yeah, all day. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I, I listen. I'll tell you guys this: Bianca would have been a better champion than than uh, than Becky. I mean, you know, I don't even know if she's gonna come back because if she's doing the mom thing now. Alexa Bliss, man, Alexa Bliss. So where's I mean, she? I mean, Triple H has done great, has done better with it taking over, but there's still some Vince isms in it. There is. There is. And, and I wonder if that's Stephanie doing that now that she's back. Yeah, especially now that she's back. You know, yeah. yeah, seeing her making draft picks last night and all that good stuff. Oh. I mean, I mean, I watch, I watch Stephanie on that big draft pick. You know. Oh, <laughs> Stephanie can draft for me. She can draft my fantasy league coming up in football. So, yeah, for sure. And she can draft your things for me, but you know. Yeah. See, That's this not- is what I love about this show. We've covered football, basketball, all levels. We've talked oh, wrestling. Baseball, <laughs> yeah, so hey, UT's baseball team is badass. I mean, yo, finally get that there more kid, run. the that more kid, yeah. Hey, oh. I pray, I pray, I pray that I, I'm living when if they win a world series, I, I pray we get we're one. so close, we're so close. We're so close. This is what we're needs like, to happen close. the pitching cannot fail you, and the bats have to stay hot through Omaha. That is what wins you a title. <laughs> and they cannot go cold like they did a couple years ago. All, all really I'm it. saying is uh, Tony V, the ladies love him, but from what I've heard, he'll go that way. Really? Old Tony V? I love could Tony see V. I could see it. Love Tony V. Yeah. I, love, I love him to death, but uh, the ladies would be upset from what I've heard from uh, some bars around downtown well you want to know something i'll end it with this at least he's not a cheap tipper at the strip club like Derek dooley was that's what i always used to hear whoa that's hilarious
What strip club did Derek Dooley Mouse ever is here. Mouse is here. I was friends with a couple of them back in the day, and they said, he may make some millions of dollars and who his daddy is, but he don't tip or shit. That's what they said. Derek Dooley was in the Mouse's ear. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about, you're talking about West or South? I'd have loved to be a... Oh, the West. Guy. Yeah, because the South was gone by then. So, oh, okay. yeah. Off Alcoa Highway. So. Uh, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll leave it with this. Uh, a girl that was your class... Okay. ...worked at South yeah. when <laughs> me and BT would have been seniors. I'm sorry I missed that. I always went to the ball, so it was, it was all right. A, yeah, it was a great time. And she's like, "Hey, don't tell anybody in school." Oh, hey, listen, if you have it, flaunt it. Uh, come on. Oh, so, oh, 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 she definitely had no, it. no judgment, no judgment. So yeah. So. so all right. Well, listen, uh, we end every show with throwing that W up because you know that Wes runs this thing in five A over here in uh, in Tennessee. And uh, glad to have Shane McGee back on our side and so forth. But uh, two pair, end the show like you always do, brother. Let's do this thing. Hey, man, love, peace, and chicken grease. We are about of here. You, you ain't got to leave, but you got to get the hell up out of here. <laughs> Go, Rebels. Love you,